Hello, good day to you. Welcome to the day to that. Today we are going to look at um, exponentials moving under quantitative methods. And so we have already looked at simple moving average and also weighted moving average. So now we are going to look at exponentials moving. Okay, so for exponential theory, we are going to look at two formulas. Okay, so it's just like how we sort for the simple moving average and the weighted moving average, but we are going to change something to more because and the exponential theory, we are going to have a constant which is alpha. So we are going to have a constant like this. Okay, so suppose we have weak and what demand. So we have weak one, weak two, weak three. Then we have demand for 20, uh, 300, and let's say 270. Okay. So you see, under weighted uh, simple moving average, um, if, if we are supposed to move it what, to three weeks, it means we are going to use what, one, two, three, the past three weeks to record or forecast for the fourth week negative. And for the weighted moving average, if uh, they are going to give us what, weight, so if you have two weeks, it means you are going to the has to weeks right to forecast for um, the table but under exponential uh, smoothing we are going to have a formula that is suppose you are forecasting for a particular period that is the current period which is t so you are supposed to have the forecast for the previous week you get it so that is why it is minus one then plus your constant or weight then you multiply it by your actual that is the demand right so your actual value for the previous week that's minus your forecast for the previous week again so this is what we are going to have or this is what we are going to use as our formula for exponential smoothing okay so don't forget forecast for the particular period is equal to the forecast for the previous period plus your weight or your um, constant then you multiply it by the demand or the actual value for the previous period minus the same forecast for the previous period so this is what we are going to do and another formula says your forecast for the particular period is equal to just subtract um, the constant from one okay because under weighted moving average we came to realize that um, when you add all the weights you have to get what you want so if you are having a constant like this to be let's say 0 0.7, it will be 1 minus 0 0.7 giving you 0 0.3, right? So it means you are going to use 0 0.7 and 0 0.3, right? So anytime you have a demand, you multiply it by what? Um, the 0 0.7, right? Then you add it to the multiplication of the what forecast for the previous uh, period, okay? Yes, so it either we use this formula or um, the second formula. So as and when we are moving forward, we will use the two, okay, for better understanding. All right. Now we are going to forecast. We are going to forecast for this particular um, table, okay. So now we save the current forecast. So we are forecasting for period one or week one. So if you are forecasting for week one, then it means you have to get what? Uh, now we don't have any previous demand. So the demand for the first week is going to be the forecast for the first week. Okay. Yes. So now let's move on to week two. Now week two, because the reason why it is the same for is that you see here, we are supposed to get what forecast for the previous week. And when we get here, we are supposed to get what? Um, demand or actual value for the previous week, but here we don't have any actual value for the previous week. It's just the fourth week, which is starting the week. You get it. That is why um, we always bring the first week to the forecast, uh, week one of the forecast. Okay. Then I didn't give a constant, so let me give a constant. Let's say zero point five. Okay. Yes. So now what we do is. Uh, for week two, we say F2, forecast for week two, is equal to forecast for the previous week. And forecast for the previous week is what, 420. So we say 420 plus 
our constant, which is 0 0.25, multiplying with your actual or so the actual demand, right, or the uh, actual figure, right, that we are supposed to forecast for the previous week. Now you are forecasting for week two, so we need the previous week, which is what 420, right, 420 minus. Then forecast for the previous week is what 420. Okay. So we have 420. Okay. So now when we get here, it becomes F2 equals 420 plus 0 0.5. Here we give what zero, right? So you have F2 equals 420. Okay. Right. So now the forecast for the second um, period is also what 420. Okay, so now let's move on to the forecast for period 3. So we see F3 is equal to. We need the forecast for the previous week, which is 420. Okay. Plus 0 0.5. Multiplying with the forecast for the previous week, which is. So the demand for the previous week, which is 310. Right, so we have 310 minus the forecast for the previous week, which is 420. Okay, 420. So when we get here, we say F3 is equal to 420 plus 310 minus 420 will give you what? 110. So we have 0 0.5 multiplying 110. So your F3 is equal to 420 plus, this one will give you 0 0.5 times 104 is 55, okay? So 55. So 55 to this one, you have F3 equals 475. So now our week 3, the forecast for the week 3 is what? 47. Five. You see that? So that is how to calculate for what a forecast of sorry, uh, the exponential smooth how to forecast for a particular uh, let's say demand using what exponential smooth is. This is how we go by. So there is forecast for the three, forecast for the two, and for week one, because we don't have any past history or past uh, actual figures, we are going to use the same thing for the week one. Okay. So now let's pick a question again. We solve it. Okay, so now let's look at how to um, solve a question like this under exponential smoothing. Okay, now it's, the previous one was just a sample. Okay, so let's take this question and look at how to solve it. So you see, we have our week, we have our demand, and we have the constant to go at 0 0.5. Okay, so now we have to forecast for the rest of the period. Okay, so we write forecast here. Okay. Then what do we do? For forecasting, we know our formula is what? The forecast for the current period is equal to the forecast for the previous period plus your constant multiplying what? Your actual value for the previous week minus the forecast for the previous week. Okay. So now forecast for week one is the same as what your actual value you can put that one in mind or let us say you can put in the values and you are still going to get what 820 because you don't have what any uh, actual value or demand for the previous week so we are going to have 820 here okay then let's do it for week two so week two becomes f of two is equal to we have to use what um the previous week that is 820 so we have 820 plus the constant is 0 0.5 multiply now the actual value for the previous week is what um, we are forecasting for the second period so the actual value for the previous week is 820 this one so we have 820 minus 820 which is the forecast for the previous week and so the whole of this is going to be the zero so your f of 2 is equal to 820 right so we have 824 
week two. Now, when you come to week three, you see you have 680. So f of three is equal to you have 680 here, but you need the forecast for the previous week, which is 775. So 775 plus 0 0.5 multiplying the actual value for the previous week is what? I'm supposed to use the forecast for the previous week here. That is 820. Okay. Then actual value for the previous week. We are forecasting for week three. So the actual value for the previous week is 775 minus what? 820. That is the forecast for the previous week. Okay. Yes. So we have f of 3 equals 820 plus now 0 0.5 0 0.5 multiplying 7 7 7 like so 0 7 7 5 0 0.5 multiplying 7 7 5 so you have seven seven five minus eight twenty multiplying zero point five. Okay, so you have minus what twenty two point five. Okay, so you have fifty seven point five. Fifty seven point five zero. Okay, so for period three, the forecast is what? 57.50. No, it's 820. So, 820 minus 22.5. So, 797.5. This is 797.50. Okay, then we come to week four. We are going to do C. Okay. So I'm going to do it for the four and I'll leave the week five for you to do it and you give me the answer in the comment section. Okay. So let me clean here and do that. So for week four, we see F of four is equal to the forecast for the previous week. Week four, the forecast for the previous week is what? This one. Right? That is seven nine seven point five two. Seven nine seven point five zero. Okay. Plus zero point five into brackets. Then you have the actual value for the previous week, which is six eight minus seven nine seven point five zero. Okay. Yes. So um when you solve everything here, you have f of four equal to Seven nine seven point five zero plus. So um, let me get all this equation. So you have six eighty minus seven nine seven point five. Then we multiply it by zero point five. So you have. Minus three six four and seven five. Okay, then seven nine seven point five. Okay, so we have our week four to be four three two point seven five. Okay, so we have four three two point seven. Okay, so this is the forecast for week four. So now the forecast for week five, I'm going to leave it to you. So we'll just calculate for the forecast for week five and provide the answer of the comment section. I'll come there to uh, verify it. So this is about the exponential what smoothing. Okay, yes, just know the formula that always the forecast for the current period is equal to the forecast for the previous period. You get it. So if here is two, here is going to be two minus giving you f of one right so the current forecast is uh, forecast for the previous week plus your constant 
multiplying your actual value or the demand for the previous week minus the forecast for the previous week. Okay, yeah, so that's the formula. Let's put this one in mind and we are good to go. So this brings us to the end of what exponential what is moving. Okay, yes, the next the next time we meet, we are going to talk about uh, forecast what errors. Okay. Alright, so thank you for joining us in today's lesson.